And so I'm grateful that the governor has, has uh, certainly um, re-emphasized um, his commitment to make sure that the city of Chicago uh, maintains its status as a world-class city. Ladies and gentlemen, okay. thanks for joining us again. Terry Martin with the Illinois Channel, and I'm joined by Jeff Berkowitz of Public Affairs Television. And Jeff, we're going to be talking about some of the things the governor and the new mayor-elect might want to be thinking about as uh, the mayor is going to be sworn in in May, Mayor Johnson. Uh, he had a meeting just recently with the governor, and they talked about some of their key issues. Here's what the governor had to say. I, I want to be clear to everybody that we share a lot in common, our desire to lift up the people of the city of Chicago, to make sure we're addressing the most urgent issues uh, and growing the economy of the city, because that helps grow the economy of the state of Illinois. So job creation and entrepreneurship, small businesses, uh, and making sure that we're uh, creating an avenue for success for everybody in our city. So Jeff, there it is. The governor wants to uh, rebuild the business community, have a great environment. But I was shocked in listening to this that the one thing that I would say is the number one issue never seemed to come up in this press conference, either by either gentleman or by the media asking questions. What do you think that was, Jeff? You and I have talked about it many times before. Crime, crime, crime. The number one issue in the mayor's race has just concluded. People said there were three issues. Number one was crime. Number two is crime. Number three was crime. The governor didn't talk about crime. And uh, you're absolutely right. The governor didn't talk about crime. The mayor elect didn't talk about crime. But crime, crime is going to be the legacy of Lori Lightfoot as Mayor Brandon Johnson comes in. He is going to have to be tackling that. And you know what, Jeff? Let's take a look at something that Wirepoint shared with us, and it is that crime, as you can see there, in Chicago, up 46% versus 2022. And those are the crime statistics through April the 2nd of this year, 2023. That is the first shocking. Quarter, the first quarter, folks should know, a major crime increase versus 2022 first quarter. So crime in the first quarter of this year coming off very high crime, up 46% major crimes, not jaywalking, major crimes. Why isn't the governor saying if Chicago is going to lead the way, why is he not reminding the mayor-elect just how important it is to get a handle on crime because he says he wants business, <coughs> excuse me, the governor says he wants business to come. They will come. Take a lead. Listen to what Ken Griffin told you for several years. If you don't fix crime, he said to Mayor Lori Lightfoot, if you don't fix crime, we can't stick around. We can't re recruit talent. We can't retain talent. We can't do business. Finally, he got fed up and he left. There was no solution on its way to start reducing crime. So. A little bit of pressure on mayor-elect Brandon Johnson. Well, and that's absolutely right. So when they're talking about reinvesting in our communities, you're, you're just not going to be able to achieve realistically anything positive, I would argue, unless you know the people that are working in our businesses in Chicago, the people that own the businesses in Chicago, the people that may want to start a business, a, a bar, a restaurant, uh, a new manufacturing facility. They're not going to do it. They're not going to invest in a community where crime is up so dramatically. Now, the good news is, and the statistics as we just uh, showed, the uh, murder rate is down 15% there, but look at the bottom. Look at what is happening in motor the uh, vehicle theft, uh, 133% increase. That, that is out incredible. Uh, so that's the thing that uh, Chicago is facing. That's a big issue, well, crime Terry, that's Terry. exploding in Chicago. But to acknowledge when you say cr murder is down, that's from those two big years we had in 20 and 2020 right. of 800 and 2021 of 800, a modern peak. And so when you're down from those modern peaks, 
that's nothing to cheer about. Yes, you're going in the right direction. And even then, it's only but, down 15%. As you, it's a good point you're well, making. And, and more to the point, if you go back three years, four years, you know, and you look at the four-year period, you went from if 2022 it's 700, go back to 2018 it's 500. So you've had a 40% increase if you look at what's happened from 2018 to 2022. So even though it's down in that one year, you better look at some long-term trends, Mayor Brandon Johnson, Governor Pritzker. Don't just take one year and celebrate and say, oh, everything's good. It isn't. The mayor-elect wants to reinvest in communities. He wants to have some job programs for youth. Uh, that's all well and good. But I would say you can't be doing that to the exclusion of fighting crimes. And that means you're going to need more police on the beat. You're going to need to have the police back, not be like Lori Lightfoot where you're at war with your own police department. Jeff, let's take a, another look at uh, these statistics put together by our friends at Wirepoint. At the arrest rate, 5%. Chicago had an arrest rate of 5% in 2022. Uh, the arrest rate for murders were 32%. But look at this criminal sexual assault, otherwise known as rape, 3%. Uh, theft over $500, 1%. Motor vehicle theft, we just saw how that was soaring, and maybe it's soaring because the arrest rate is only 3%. We are incentivizing criminal activity. Aggravated battery, Jeff, you want to be mugged uh, in Chicago? Hey, there you go. It's only 17% arrest rate, and that 17% is uh, high compared to to so many of the other statistics of right. crime. Right. Remember that whole that whole slide, that whole chart is based on total reported reported major crimes. Right. There are major crimes, believe it or not, that go unreported, meaning the arrest rate is actually, even actually lower, lower when you use the right it's denominator. It's another great point you're making. It's that's so, true for you this and month. Again, this <laughs> this comes from wire points these data need to be looked Let me bring at. it back up so that people can see this as you're talking. That's that subheading. You got to read the fine print. It says total reported crimes in Chicago, total reported major Chicago crimes uh, with an arrest in 2022. So again, it's unreported, but there are a lot of unreported and they're talking major crimes. And this arrest rate gets better when you have police in the right numbers so they can go out and they have the respect and they have the and the government has the backs of police who are doing nothing wrong but doing say <coughs> excuse me what Vallis called <coughs> excuse me what paul Vallis called constitutional community policing on uh, at the level where the people are at the beat Get the, get the community in their respective districts and respective areas to know the police, to know who's on the beat with them. Jeff, I want to bring up this next slide relative to crime. And as we can see there, Chicago's reported major crimes jumped to near nearly 67,000 in 2022. As you can see there, it's an, that was an increase of 41% versus the previous year and uh, again if you're going to be building a world-class city trying to keep chicago as a world-class city you better be addressing this massive increase in one year in major crimes and terry let's remind people again the emphasis is on reported major crimes and we're going from a year in which COVID was winding down to a year in which COVID is not present, 2022. So you can't blame this on COVID. So what do you blame it on? And you have to ask yourself, if you're trying to turn this around, do you do this with social workers? Do you do this with a more complete adherence to the consent decree? I don't think so. I think you need more police. 
You need more police on the beat. You might need more detectives, but 200 detectives are not enough. The Chicago consent decree is not enough. No, what you need is a change in attitude, change in attitude by the chief judge, Tim Evans. So when you get people who are arrested and they are dangerous criminals, you detain them while they're waiting for trial. So they don't have, as Ballas, Paul Ballas said, at any given point, 90% of people who committed uh, felonies are out on the street. What you can't can, that. What you can uh, Brandon Johnson as the mayor do to get Tim Evans or to get Kim Fox, the Cook County prosecuting attorney, what can he well, do he, to get them to step up and address crime? And aside from what he might be able to do, is Brandon Johnson, as far as you know, would he even be so inclined to want to do I that? Think, I, I don't think so, sadly, but what he could do if he wanted to, he could use moral suasion. He could use his bully pulpit. He could talk to Judge Evans personally and then publicly, if that's not working, and publicly say, we need the judge to start judging because he oversees seven or 800 circuit court judges. And many of those folks are involved in making decisions about bail. And the law still allows you, I believe, to detain people <clears throat> who are dangerous career criminals, not putting them back on the street while awaiting trial. He could use his bully pulpit to help accomplish that. He could talk to the state's attorney, Kim Fox, personally, and state's attorney at a Cook County Board President, Tony Preckwinkle, who in a sense put her there. Yes, I understand Kim Fox was elected and reelected, but the resources, the energy, the support came from Preckwinkle. So, and he could, and he could, according to Paul Vallis, I think Paul Vallis was right, he can go to judges. And if there's, there are prosecutable crimes that Kim Fox, prosecutable violent crimes that she's not prosecuting, you can ask a judge to appoint somebody to prosecute those things. And all you have to do that is a few times. Yeah, but as you say, he's not even, he's probably not going to be so inclined. That's not his record. Um, well, then, that's not his then, that, then Terry, then Terry, it's incumbent on, on the media like us to bring this to people's attention. And, and make it a priority, right? Pardon? And make it a priority and make crime, raise priority. the awareness right. of the amount of crime and to say, and you know, the, the media is supposed to be nonpartisan in favoring one candidate over another. They're not supposed to favor any candidate. They are not supposed to be nonpartisan when it comes to whether we should have crime or not. And they have to be addressing these crimes and the threat to society in Chicago. Jeff, let me bring up this next slide that, again, we have from our friends at Wirepoints. And folks, look, this is Wirepoints isn't making this up. They're putting this together. They're gathering this information. Um, and as we can see, there were no Chicago police available when 400,000 high priority calls for service went out in 2021 that is as, that is un Jerry, unacceptable it, by it should be by and, any means and helping this is a slide from wire points and wire points put in at the bottom of the slide it's in somewhat small print so we'll read it priority one is defined not by wire points but by the people who organize this data which are public priority one is defined as an imminent threat to life bodily injury, or major property damage or loss. Priority two defined as when timely police action has the potential to affect the outcome, the outcome of an incident. So these are the calls we're talking about, priority one and two. These are the calls when Lori Lightfoot came into office, numbered in 2019, 156,000 calls that went one, that were unanswered. Police were not available. Now under her, in 2021, not now, but two years ago, under the uh, regime of Lori Lightfoot, the number of these calls had increased from 146,000 unanswered, unresponded to calls to 406,000. 
what they are this year. Well, we that's don't over, know. Jeff. I think doubt about it went down. I if doubt if it went that down. were a thousand calls a day, it would be three hundred and sixty-five thousand. This right. is four hundred and six thousand over a thousand calls a day. So, uh, <clears throat> police, I see someone being beaten up by a gang. Well, no police. We don't have, no police. Yeah, and, and you know, Cherry, Cherry, if you were a policeman and you're going to be, and you want to do constitutional policing and you want to do community policing and you want to be proactive, should you? Should you? When you act properly, it's clear the mayor and maybe even the newly appointed Chicago Police Department chief <clears throat> may not have your back. And the media certainly won't have your back. So why should you, Terry? Why should you risk your life and limb for something that will go fully unappreciated? So you have to raise the morale, Mayor-elect Johnson, of the police and let them know, you folks act constitutionally, you folks act proactively, you folks focus through community policing, I will have your back. So when you walk into a room, the police won't turn their back on you as they did to Lori Lightfoot, okay? They turn yeah, their I back mean, because they're making that point that she turned their back, her back on them. We're asking she, men and women in the police department to go out and put their lives on the line. And that's not hyperbole because we have seen officers in Chicago under Lori Lightfoot, there have been a number who have been shot and a number who have been killed. And so it is a dangerous job. At the very least, we should have an administration that helps and backs up the police, put some money behind them, get more out there, improve whatever you have to do. I, I'm not going to pretend I know where all the snags in the system are, but having 400,000 priority one and two calls go unheeded it is untenable and anything else you say you want to do to improve the quality of a quality city a world-class city in a world-class city when you call the police they pick up the phone and they appear on the scene and that ain't happening in chicago right now and, and remember you're going to ask police to make an instant decision in the seconds they're going to see somebody running they're going to see that person has a gun. It's late at night. It's two in the morning. It's dark. They can't necessarily see age. They can't see size. But they know that if that gun, if that individual turns and appears to have a gun, because that person had a gun just seconds before, indisputably, when he turns, has he dropped the gun? Is it pointed at you? You have an instant to make that decision. You make the wrong decision, you're dead. You make the wrong decision, maybe an innocent person who, or a person who's dropped his gun, his shot, but only an instant. And so when you make a decision or an entity makes a decision as to whether the police acted properly, think about it. Think about the circumstances. Think about the overall circumstances. And before you fire somebody, a cop for that, make sure you've done your job if you're the Chicago police chief. And if you're the mayor, make sure you've done your job of backing up good cops, not scapegoating. This is tough work for the mayor and for the police chief and the others involved. I'm not saying it's easy, but you better approach things thoughtfully, not as what helps you with your constituency. Got it? Let me ask you so. let me ask you something. Who is the current chief of police in the city of Chicago? Well, I think it's Eric Carter, if I'm thinking, getting the name right. He was just the interim. And the reason why I mention this, and I don't know all the facts, but I think the journalists should get all the facts because, as I understand it, the interim police chief has just recommended that in the Toledo shooting of a 13-year-old that's been it was over a year ago, that he has recommended that that policeman be fired, even though the prior police chief, full police chief, have looked at it and said he recommended a suspension, but not a firing. These are tough decisions. We want, and people are saying the interim chief wants to be the final chief by be appointed that by the mayor, and maybe this decision. Some people speculate of firing this policeman will help 
help get him that position because there are constituencies that wanted that cop to be fired or prosecuted. If that so happens, we'll if that happens, to pick up on what you're saying. So you're saying that uh, this interim police chief may be pushing to have this cop fired because that would put him in better stead with Brandon Johnson. Is that what you're saying? I'm saying maybe with an emphasis on maybe. I don't know the facts. I've only know what I've read. So you're, you're speculating. Uh, sometimes you got to speculate. You can't read people's minds. Right. But that may be what's going on here. If that happens, if you are correct in your speculation, I have to presume, I'll speculate, that the, uh, the cops on the beat, the FOP in Chicago, they're not going to like that. And they're going to think gonna this like is it. not an administration, the Brandon Johnson administration. This is going to be a repeat of the Lightfoot. This is going to be another war on cops by the Chicago uh, administration of the mayor's office. Instead of saying, no, we're going to support you. We got your back. We're going to give you, the cops on the beat, the benefit of the doubt when you have these tough situations. Right. And Mayor, Mayor-elect Brandon Johnson he criticized Paul Vallis for implying that he could fill the 1,100 to 1,500 vacancies just like that. And the reason, one reason why, and he'd be correct in saying, you might have difficulty filling all of those slots in a year or so, because people don't want to come into these circumstances where they're not going to be judged fully on, did they make the right decision at the right time, even though somebody, it was shown later, didn't have a gun in his hand. But he saw just before, he did have a gun in his hand. It's dark, it's difficult. And you know, one of the things that they're firing this guy for it is they may not have followed complete policy before he went out on the foot chase. You know, before he started running, did he get this? To get a supervisor to say, yeah, you can start chasing that guy because until you get that, if I got this right, you have broken a rule. Is that something you should fire somebody over? Did I get that right? Look, folks, it is all, this just came out in the last few days. I haven't studied it. So all with the caveat, I promise you, before we come to the next show or the next opportunity to discuss it, I'll know as many facts as I can. So will Terry Martin and so will you all. And if every journalist does that, knows all the facts, talks all the people, gets the pros and cons. If they do that, well, then we'll have a better city and we'll have a better fourth estate and a better journalism and it'll be balanced. And that's not a fair tale. Look, in television, in television, people do series. They typically do series in sweeps. We call it sweeps week. It's really more like sweeps month. Uh, I would say folks in journalism, in TV, in radio, make crime a priority, make, boil the pot, boil the pot under those in power to take this crime wave on and to address it forthwith. We just had a still, we went off on a, a little discussion there, but we, we had a still we were just talking about of the 400,000 priority one and two calls. Jeff, what happens when you don't get answers to priority one and priority two? This is what you get. You get 25.8 murders per 100,000. You get a murder rate in Chicago that is bigger than Los Angeles, bigger than New York. Uh, you get people being killed. And I remember there was a statistic that living in Chicago was more dangerous than living, uh, than the soldiers in Afghanistan before we left there. That is an indictment of Chicago. And if you want to have a world-class city, you ain't going to do it when you're getting 25.8 people per 100,000 being murdered Lord. in your city. You better before address the governor, this. Before the governor fairly refers to Chicago as a world-class city and maintaining it, he didn't say build toward it. He better answer that question. Because some people, like at TTW, the Chicago Public TV station, like to say, well, crime is high. Very Paris should say, crime is high, but crime is high everywhere. But no, Paris, crime is higher with our major competitors. Certainly New York is comparable. We're not talking Omaha, okay? We're talking New York. New York has a population way higher, and yet their rate, their rate, okay, just for population, is five times lower way higher way higher and again you see 
just to remind the people of the numbers, and Jeff, let me bring you up there. I mean, come on. What is the feeling of the people on the street? And by the way, we only got about four minutes here, so uh, okay. if you well, want to move along. Let's move on because we want to cover a few quick points. So let's move on, if we can, Terry, to the next slide. All right, let's bring that up, and there you go. And uh, let me pull you out for a second so they can see the uh, headline. Uh, blacks and Hispanics make up 95% of homicide victims in Chicago. So you want to be uh, helping the lifestyles of the black and brown people? Maybe we ought to be cutting down on the rate of murder, Jeff. Right. If you're not racist, and I'm not going to accuse these folks, the mayor-elect or the governor, of being racist, but if you're not, you better be caring about doing something about that homicide rate instead of implying that, oh, well, we want to not, we don't want to jail more people. We don't want to arrest more people. Let's point out these numbers this, right there in the discriminatory homicide. Against, excuse me, because somehow that's discriminatory against blacks. No, it's discriminatory against those victims, which are 95%. The homicide victims, 95% black and Hispanic. But let's move quickly because we only have a minute or two, and then maybe we can recap. Let's go to the next slide, Terry. Well, this is the, uh, which do you want to the... Uh, well, let's go to education. We'll, we should, we'll pick this up, but this should have been a, a major topic in the last race. It wasn't, it was mostly on crime and it wasn't very well discussed on crime. Well, but there you go. Our education, education is failing the students. Yeah, 11% of the CPS students who are black read at grade level. 17% of Hispanic students at CPS read at grade level. 6% of the black students at CPS do math proficiently. 12% of the Hispanic students do math at CPS proficiently. Those are terrible numbers. Brandon Johnson implies we need more investment, or as he might put more bluntly, more spending for kids. You don't think we should be able to do much better than only teaching 11% of the kids? To read at grade level. When I raised this with the mayor, he said, Jeff, the primary determinant of whether you can do this well is the economic status of the family. I think whatever the economic status, with all due respect, Mayor Johnson, Mayor elect Johnson, whatever the economic status is, we should do much better at teaching these kids black and Hispanic who are 90% of the CPS population how to read and how to do math. That's what I think. So we're spending money in our police department. We're spending money in Chicago's education establishment. We're not getting a very good return. You want to talk about investments? We're not getting a very good return on investment in either crime fighting or education. And my fellow journalists, hold those in office responsible. You guys are responsible for being the critics, for being the, the you're not supposed to be the lap dogs. You're supposed to be the watchdogs. Be Terry, one, one recommendation. You want to be a fireman? Hold those feet to the fire. Hold those feet of those people who are responsible in the education bureaucracy, in the government, in the mayor's office, in the police department. Hold everybody's feet to the fire, not just a few who you want to scapegoat. That's my recommendation. Yeah, just don't be re reporting on the, the crime in the street, the dead body, the shootings. Go beyond that and say, why is this happening? What do we need to do to stop it? And, and that's what we need to uh, address. Jeff, we're gonna be, uh, we're out of time, but uh, ladies and gentlemen, we thank you for joining us. Please put a comment if you're watching this on YouTube down below. Tell us what you think. Tell us if we're on target or if we're off target. And Jeff, until next time, we'll see you. We'll respond to your comments, make them. Thanks so much.